Hello, this is Karmatos, and I just spent the last three days making a Horus Heresy Legion's crate calculator and simulator. Ta-da! You can see it here a little bit. Uh, essentially, it's something on the simulator side where you select which crate you want to open a bunch of, or however many you like, set how many you would like to open, set how many crates since the last legendary, hit the button, and it takes it away. Uh, here initially we have an example of a 500 crate run just to kind of see the big numbers. This particular run happened to be uh, pr pretty lucky for legendaries. It was 7 more than the expected 25. You should expect a little bit higher than that uh, 5% because of the since last crate rule where if you get really lucky um, you know you'll just get a rapid fire but if you get really unlucky it just you know actually has a safety net there for at 30 so it should always be a little higher than five percent but seven was uh, a lot extra so a nice simulation around there uh the crates are just one shy of their target which is pretty accurate the rares are at yeah that's about right 111 percent um once upon a time i did a recorded buying 70 packs or uh, documented everything and it turns out that um i think i got 70 crates in that one and 78 rares, so about 10% higher, so that matches my personal experience, and I'll explain how uh, all of these numbers are calculated here in just a bit. But while I do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and run another batch of 500 here in the background, and uh, the example I want to use is a one where I really like word bearers, and I really want Logar. I don't have Logar yet, so I'm just going to go to word bearers here, set it to 500. I have zero. Uh, since last crate, and then I'm going to just run this, and then I'm going to go see uh, how many crates until I get a Logar. Um, I've done simulations like this before, where sometimes I got it on pack 7, sometimes I got it on pack 24, so let's see how it goes this time. And while that's running, I'm going to be extra careful to not accidentally change anything in the sheet, because while the script is running, each one of those is considered an action, so if I try to undo, it'll instead undo the last thing it wrote here, and then won't redo it, and Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and break down into little bits of how everything got here. Uh, what we have here is the first thing I made, which is the faction input page. Um, put a lot of heart into this, and it should look a little familiar in its formatting. Uh, I still have the game screen up for this reason. Let's go over to Cards and Collection and click one. And we can see here, see compact list of all cards owned and missing. Boom. And that's the model. We got Ezekiel in the upper left, Seduction in the bottom right, Ezekiel in the upper left, and uh, Seduction in the bottom right. When um, Evergild, uh, if they ever make a export your collection function, I'll certainly integrate that um, instead of using something like this, but this is the next best thing I could do for the immediate. And it just kind of gives you a nice visual collection of what you got. And you can see here there's some numbers and they match up to these numbers. Where the energy is on the left, the rarity is on the right, and the quantity is here. And when that's um, solid but no number, it's one. When it's got a times two, it's two. And if it's black and hollow, it's a zero. And then you just simply go through, and you know, with a little bit of uh, num padding, you can enter in everything, and then you just do that for everything. Um, I'm a little bit of a Martha Stewart. I already took care of that, so that way we wouldn't have to watch me do that for. 900 something cards <laughs> and then on the right side we have some uh let me go ahead and get rid of this da, 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 da. left monitor uh we got some little visual representations that i have all commons for horus i have all but two rares and that's based on you know two 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 one two you know it's not like the unique rares it's the uh actual number of pot potential rares you can own so you know Warlords kind of need to be mathed out of that, where if it's an epic warlord, it's not times two on the math, it's only times one, so it's all taken care of here for the full collection. Um, there was a lot of data entry. Uh, if anybody finds anything typoed, if something's the wrong rarity, wrong energy, uh, please let me know. It would drive me mad to think that something's wrong in here, and again, when you type in 900 things, 3% of it's probably going to be wrong, maybe 1%, I don't know, well, you'll have to let me know. So that's still cooking in the background, our script. Go check in on that. We're at 371 crates. Oh, it just jumped up to the 6% again. And we're doing good on epics. Bears are higher than usual. And we'll just keep letting that go. 
Up next is the more functional uh, collectible card list. Um, it pulls its quantities based on what you inputted on the first sheet, and it shows you what crate the card comes from, uh, what faction it belongs to, all the same fields that we saw in the other thing with the cost, whether it's a warlord, uh, name and such. Then uh, in the near future here, I'm gonna input things like type and subtype, attack, health, and text. Type meaning troop versus warlord versus um, tactic. Subtype being things like custode or demon ver or astartes versus uh, what are the other ones? Uh, practical or theoretical, you know, those kind of additional fields. Uh, attack and health if it's a troop, and the text of the card. And I may even add a specific text field for traits, for things like stealth and bloodlust, or thirst. I forget which. Um, and that way it can be filterable on that, so it's soon to come. Then we have uh, the actual forward crate ca or, uh Probability calculations on, oh, let's go to the far left, a little more sense there. Oh, looks like a crate simulator finish there in the background. 500 crates, 6.2%, not as lucky as the first time, but a little less. Better on the epics and better on the rares. That was just an overall better. Uh, let's see, uh, how long until we see Logar? We just look for the yellow. Logar, boom, pack number 30. And <laughs> that was a string of zero legendaries until pack 30 and that's when the rural 30 kicked in and then there he is and then you get him again on 34 so enjoy your uh gems um eventually i plan to add something where it takes a temporary copy of this and moves it to a sheet whenever you run the crate simulator and then once it finishes this it would do a lookup on all the names and essentially add them to the temporary sheet of this, and then that would tell you how many of your cards were actually new, how many of them were duplicates, and the resulting gems from your duplicates based on the overlap, and uh, an example of what your new card library would be, but uh, those are projects for the future. Uh, crate Calculator uh, is something that, you know, pulls from those fields in the uh, collectible card list for, like, this is how many of these... Um, I own for Istvan 3 crate, and that's how many are possible to own, and therefore I'm missing 53, and if I were to buy crates of this, my expected gems would be 63.19, uh, and that's based on some math up there. <laughs> and then um, same here with like legendaries, this is how many legendaries I own from Istvan 3 crates, it looks it up if, you know, the things match. And that's how many are available, so I'm missing 15. Then we have some uh, probability math here, where we have the probability that's set over here on probabilities. Ta-da! And we multiply that by the five cards you get for the expected utility of what's going to happen. I'll expected utility and at least one per crate are two different things, and I guess I'll go ahead and explain that now. So. Through a little bit of intuition, uh, beauty of math, and uh, induction, I feel strongly that the chance of a legendary per card is 1%, chance per epic is 4%, chance per rare is 16%, and the chance of a common is 79 So that's based on some just previous um, induct experience of opening crates and uh, collecting the data on it. And it's also because when they say that you know you get a legendary one out of 20 times, that means that your expected utility of getting a legendary is, you know, if you were to buy uh, 20 crates, you should get one. If you buy 100, you should get five. And that's represented by a math over here of five times that probability. And then this number is generated then by the ratio of how many I'm missing versus how many are available. And that's how I know the new legendary. This is different than getting at least one uh, legendary in a crate. Because that um, is a number derived at uh, what are the odds of not getting a legendary, which is going to be uh, this here, and that's like 99%, as you can see, to the fifth power, because you have five times, and then subtract it out from that one. So the odds of getting no uh, legendary is 95% per crate-ish. And then, therefore, the chance of getting at least one, or the... Uh, and of inverse of that is that 
uh, probability minus one to the fifth minus one. So expected utility though takes into account things like what if you get two in a crate? Uh, these say pack. I should say crate. Uh, so what if you get two in a uh, crate? Then your yield or value is double. So that kind of offsets this 4.9 and kind of is a limit approaching that 5%. So that's where that number changes there. And all of these are uh, going to model that correct math thing. Uh, the two exceptions are the chance for a rare, and that's because of the rule that uh, exists that says our pack shall have at least a rare or better, which means that the actual chance of one per crate is actually the chance of not getting a legendary times the chance of not getting an epic. So if you don't get an epic and you don't get a legendary, then you necessarily should get at least a rare. And that's what determines the math on at least one uh, rare per crate. Then the rest of it is back to its normal self, because the only way you can get two is if you sincerely roll for two. It's not like you get a guaranteed one because there weren't two and you happen to roll for one. If you happen to roll for one, then the guarantee roll doesn't proc. The other example is the you can only ever get four commons in a crate at the most because one of them has to be a rare or better. So it's impossible to get five. So it's a zero percent chance, just hard zero there. And these numbers up here are just so small. Uh, we can't even see what they are. It's just tiny, tiny, tiny. So I'll just set that back. And uh, the beauty part comes in where if you look at the cost to buy a legendary or an epic or rare and you multiply it by these chances, they actually come out to the same expected utility of 16. And in the case of the common, very, very close. Uh, there might be a greater precision there than out of 100. Maybe it's like a 1,000 scale that they roll their random number on. But for all purposes, this has been uh, serving my models very well so far. Um, yeah, so that's where that beauty comes in. So it's pulling that 1% there times 5, since it's 5 chances. Same's going to be for the epics. Math's going to look similar. Same's going to be for the rares. It's a little bit different when it comes to uh, the commons, because again, you can't possibly get five, so there's only four chances of uh, commons happening there. And you're going to see these like, how can it be that you have a 300% chance? Again, expected utility. The average crate should have um, 3.16 um, commons, where you have some chance of getting some other stuff. Let's see what that recent one was. 345. So this was a little higher. I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure I've ever actually seen it lower. So, but that's... Oh, I know why the difference. It's the chance of a duplicate. Um, that changes things up a little. Then for faction-specific crates, uh, these numbers represent that faction only. I have five Horus cards out of six, so I'm missing one. And the math is a little different because we have to consider that two of the cards come from wild source, which is anything possible. And so it takes the sum up here of all legendaries available and all the legendaries I'm missing. And there's two shots at that versus there's three shots of the probability of just these two. So, and that's going to be true with all these here. And when we look at these actual crates, when it is a uh, faction crate, three are guaranteed to be word bearers, for example, and two are wild. There's a chance that four could be word bearers, like here. One, two, three, four. So it's not impossible to get more than four, and I've personally experienced that myself. And it's also possible that, you know, one of the first three is guaranteed to be a rare. The second two, no guarantee of that. And there's also the chance that something, you know, here, we got a legendary outside of the base three. And I've also seen that happen. Although, um, unless I'm extremely forgetful or thinking of a regular crate or something from an event. If I'm wrong, please let me know. Um, hey, another Logar at 66. So, yeah, this just goes all the way down to that boom 500. So, I think I've jabbered on enough about this. There's some expected changes where we get to see the actual um, amount of duplicates and amount of news and the uh, resulting gems as well as when the uh, new crate actually comes out, we'll get in those additional uh, Imperial Army, Mechanicum, and Chaos. Right now, when you look at the Battle of Kalth uh, crate, 
it's not going to have those yet, so this is assuming that things are just as they are, only those three factions, no, no neutral cards involved. So not a perfect representation of that soon-to-be crate, but it's best there. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Please, uh, if you have any questions or comments or such, feel free to reach out to me on uh, the Horus Heresy Discord or um, wherever it is you're viewing this, YouTube, Reddit. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. And this was Karmatos. Oh, and there will be a link to a copyable version um, somewhere in the comments if wherever you're viewing this before I completely sign off. So it'll be a view only. You won't be able to edit it. You'll have to file, make copy, and then when you have your own copy, you'll be able to input your numbers, and when the first time you try to run the open crates, it's going to throw a warning about, oh, there's a script, do you trust it? Um, there's nothing to, I mean, there's nothing nefarious going on. It's, it's just doing the math here. It's just accessing Google Sheets, but the system still makes you click it, so we'll get into that. I might make a future video here showing off the code on the back side, but I'm going to try to keep this one shorter. So this was Karmatos. Thank you for watching and uh, look forward to future posts.